Hello everyone and welcome to Singularity One on One. Singularity One on One is a podcast feature of Singularity Weblog where you can go and listen to it or download it in full. As you may already know, my name is Nicola, aka Socrates, and as always, I will be the man with the questions. Today, I'm very privileged to have David Simpson as my guest on the show. David is the author of Post Human, his 2009 debut novel, as well as Transhuman and the Gut Killers. He has a master's degree in English literature from the University of British Columbia and lives in West Vancouver with his wife Jennifer. So, hi David and welcome to Singularity One on One. Hey Nicola, and thank you for having me. The pleasure is entirely mine, David. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, with the first question, perhaps, can you tell us how you got interested in writing in general and in writing science fiction in particular, and why? Sure. Uh, those are two really different answers. Um, writing in general is something that I, it goes way back. Uh, the, when I discovered I, I liked writing, it goes all the way back to the second grade, actually. Um, and it was uh, a, an assignment that we were given by our teacher uh, to uh, write a chapter out of those little Stuart little books, the, those mouse books, which I loved back then when I was a kid. And something happened when I was, uh, when I was writing. I wrote way more than any of the other kids in the class. Uh, and, uh, you know, I still get that kick. I knew right then that this was something I loved. It was like a, uh, almost like a, a, like a drug. There was so much stimulation for me that comes from writing. I didn't know that I would be a, a sci-fi writer, um, but I, I think the reason why uh, it happened is because science fiction to me, um, uh, you know, I don't find it uh, to be somehow limiting. I don't think that because I'm a science fiction writer, there's other things that I can't write. Um, I, I think I write about the, you know, the biggest and most interesting concepts that I can think of. I, I'm, I'm very, very interested in, uh, in the future and in technology. Um, and, uh, and I guess, you know, post-human, that was directly uh, a response to reading a, an interview that uh, I found online way back in 2005 on uh, abcnews.com for Ray Kurzweil. Uh, Ray Kurzweil was uh, promoting uh, The Singularity is Near. It had just come out. And I, I was already, you know, interested in science fiction for sure. I, I was doing my, uh, I think I was doing my honors thesis, and I had incorporated a, a bunch of science fiction into it, which is unusual in English departments. Um, but when I read his interview, uh, the, the whole plot of Posthuman came to me at that moment in, uh, you know, a flood. It was, it was great. I wrote down... Uh, the whole outline, and uh, uh, I wrote the first chapter that night, um, and, uh, and and that was all because of him. I'd never heard of him before that, um, but as soon as uh, I read his vision for the future, um, it just opened creative doors, and so I'll probably be writing about that for a while. That's that's a fascinating story, uh, and I would like to go a little deeper into it but before we do that I'd like to set up the stage of the general idea first uh, if we can a little better sure. uh, by asking you what exactly is the the relationship between science fiction and technology in your opinion uh, and was it uh, that the, that you had an interest in technology to begin with and then into science fiction or was it the other way around uh, you know I, it was probably it was probably the other way around. Um, you know, I, I am like almost everybody. I mean, it's it's hard to find people that don't uh, enjoy Star Wars. And you know, I uh, I, I was uh, I was a science fiction fan. I think up to that point, and uh, and I was just you know primed to be someone who is uh, you know possibly a science fiction writer later because I you know I read a lot of comic books and. Um, and they always dealt with a lot of science fiction themes too. But what really got me, you know, seriously considering writing science fiction novels was actually my education. When when I was, um, uh, you know, reading in UBC for my first degree, for my for my undergraduate degree, 
you know, there isn't a lot of sci-fi, but when I was reading the sci-fi, that was the stuff that I was most interested in. Um, and, you know, if it was uh, a dystopian novel, that's fine. It didn't matter. If it was something that was about the future and society and how technology might change things, Fahrenheit 451 is probably a really good example of that. Uh, then those were the, the works I was really drawn to. And then I got into uh, William Gibson, actually, because of that. It was through that. Um, there was a class where I was lucky enough that we did uh, Neuromancer. Uh, and you know, then I, I watched a, a documentary that he did in, in the year 2000 called uh, No Maps for These Territories, and that was the first time I'd ever heard about uh, nanotechnology and, and, and post-humanism, and it just blew me away, just blew me away. So, so that's where um, you know, I started to see stories. Uh, but then it was just a little while later when I read that Kurzweil interview. That's when when a full story really came to me. Uh, by the way, uh, it's it's amazing how you have uh, such incredible science fiction writers such as William Gibson in in Vancouver. So uh, I, I can see how that could be very inspirational, um, and and I'm a big fan of his. But um, so let's let's go from there. Who are your favorite science fiction authors then? Who has had the most impact on you as, as, a, as a writer? Uh, I think, I mean, there's a few that I really like. Um, I, I really do like Gibson. I think Gibson's a fantastic philosopher. I think even if he wasn't a science fiction author, he'd be one of those guys that would just be absolutely fascinating to talk to for a while. That documentary uh, I talked about earlier, No Maps for These Territories, is him sitting in the backseat of a of a car for two hours and then and, and there's 40 minutes of stuff they cut that they still put on the DVD. Just fascinating to listen to him. Um, but I, I think as far as like uh, a science fiction author that has maybe influenced me or that I try to emulate a little bit. It's, it's actually probably Philip K. Dick. Um, I, I, I haven't read all of Dick's stuff, um, but I, you know, I've read, uh, um, do androids dream of electric sheep was the, was the first one that Blade Runner is based on. Uh, and I've read minority report, which is just a short story and uh, a few others. But what I really liked about his work was it was, it was deep but it didn't feel like it was deep. You know, you could really, really uh, enjoy it. Uh, he didn't write in a style that was cumbersome or made you feel like you were working to try and get through it. Uh, it was just fun right from the get-go. But yet he, you know, he didn't limit himself. He was dealing with uh, with the biggest issues. Um, you know, the issues that I think he thought were the most interesting to write about. And uh, I think that's how I write too. Uh, you you just touched upon the the biggest issues. Uh, that one can write about. Uh, so let me ask you this. Is there an overarching theme spanning across the, the books that you have written so far? Is there something uniting or, or a common thread that underpins them all? Uh, yes, I, I do think so. Um, you know, the, my first two books are, are post-human and transhuman, and they're, they're connected together. Uh, transhuman is the, the sequel for uh, post-human. But my third book is called The God Killers. And even though there are, I mean, it's, it's science fiction. It, it, it's set in the present, and it's also, I think, it qualifies very much as, as horror. Um, and, and because they don't take place anywhere near the same time period and uh, and um, and because they, they deal with different things, you'd think that there wouldn't be a unifying issue, but uh, I think that there that there is, and and that issue is uh, always about you know striving for more consciousness, uh, always. I mean, a, a repeated motif in post-human and transhuman is just you know waking up, um, and uh, with uh, the God Killers, it's the it's the same thing. I mean, the the protagonists in that book feel as though uh, they know something uh, that most of the other people in the world don't know it, and uh, you know it's uh, that it's up to them to try and and save the other people. So, uh, it, in in all the books so far, some sort of you know big oppressive force 
and the protagonists are are battling against that and and always it's about you know self reliance and 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 more consciousness so do you see yourself and your role as a writer in that sense then as a storyteller or as a futurist or as a philosopher yeah. and a teacher uh well all of those <laughs> but uh but i think as a teacher i mean that's a that's a big one um you, you know the african writer chinua achebe says just very simply writers are teachers and uh, i agree with that i really do and um i think that the best works um teach you something and that's what what grounds them and makes them interesting even if you don't realize that you're learning something and i i don't really want my uh readers to feel like my work is uh pedantic or or even that it's really didactic i i want them to to enjoy it and i love it when you know people say that they they read the books and they go through them very very quickly you know they'll read them in a in a in a day or two um and and they'll even describe them sometimes as light uh and uh and i think like ha, i did my job because um you know they they may not realize that they were exposed to actually some really deep stuff and uh um uh, and and i do think that you can't really write um you can't really write a good book unless there's an idea that you're trying to get across to your audience i mean you're, really what you're doing is you're trying to communicate something um and uh and what drives me and and gives me inspiration is thinking um you know oh i've got this idea i've got to tell everybody and uh and the way that i tell it um is through storytelling and then you know uh philosophy comes with that uh there's a there's an awful lot of philosophy especially in transhuman i think um uh and and then you know being a futurist i think is maybe that's the lowest on the totem pole for me um i i try i mean i i'm really interested in the future i don't want to uh i don't want to dismiss that at all um but I, in in the sense that i'm trying to say oh you know by this time period i think this will happen i i try not to do that um you know in post human and trans human i never do say what year it is because i find that um if you do uh you always end up looking silly <laughs> later on uh so i just like to say it's the future maybe it's 30 years from now maybe it's 100 years from now but uh but um you know these are elements that will be in the future but you know it's a possible future <laughs>